Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're going to be uh, really exploring the life and work of Sam Bacton. Sam Bacton. Yeah. Okay. You might not recognize the name right off the bat, but I think once we get into it, you'll see why this is a this is going to be an interesting one. Yeah. We've got excerpts from his Wikipedia page, and uh, we're going to really try to unearth some knowledge nuggets from all of this information. Yeah. What's so interesting about Sam Bacton is that he is a writer and a professor of psychology. Okay. But he's dedicated, you know, so much of his life to narcissism. Okay. And he actually runs a whole website about narcissistic personality disorder, MPD. So we've got a guy who is like super into narcissism. Yes. But the thing that is so interesting about this particular deep dive is that it seems like his own personal journey is very much intertwined with this exploration of this very complex personality disorder. Yeah, it really makes you think, you know, what, what would lead someone down this path right. to study this so closely? Exactly. And if we take a look at his background, it kind of adds another layer to all of this. He was born in Israel, oh. eldest of five children. So we're talking a full house. Wow. A lot of personalities to navigate. Right. Sephardi Jewish immigrant parents. Okay. And he even describes his childhood as, quote, difficult, end quote, hmm. suggesting that his parents struggled with his, quote, giftedness, end quote. That's a very loaded statement. It is. When you think about it, to feel like your family. Yeah. Even if it's just a feeling, to feel like your family couldn't really deal with how smart you were. Right. Or like how different you were. Yeah. It kind of speaks to, I think, a really intense personality from a young age. Yeah. And you see that intensity. You see that drive throughout his life. I mean, mm -hmm. just looking at his career path, military service. Then he goes on to found a chain of information kiosks. Okay. And then he works for international firms. Wow. I mean, talk about somebody who just does not seem content with the status quo. He's not just sitting in a cubicle somewhere. No. He's right. out there, like, really trying to, like, I don't know what the word is, conquer the world almost. Mm -hmm. It really seems like a very restless mind, yeah. constantly seeking these new challenges, these new experiences. Absolutely. And it seems like this constant pursuit of knowledge, this pursuit of understanding the human experience, ultimately leads him to this pivotal moment in the mid-1980s okay. where he embarks on his own journey with NPD. Oh, interesting. Okay. So we've got Vaknin, mid-1980s, he's engaged. Okay. But he's starting to notice some issues in the relationship. Oh. And on top of that, he's dealing with these mood swings. Yeah. So he decides to seek help from a psychiatrist. Makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. a lot of people find themselves in that situation. Yeah. You're going through something, you need some answers. Sure. And so he goes to this psychiatrist hoping for some clarity, I guess. Yeah, and that's when he gets hit with the diagnosis, NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. So, NPD. Yeah. I mean, that's a... It's a big one. It's a heavy diagnosis. Comes with a lot of baggage. Yeah, and I imagine for anybody receiving that diagnosis, it must really make you stop and think. But what's interesting is his initial reaction... What does he do? He rejects it. Wow. Yeah, just flat out denies it. Which is, you know, when you think about it, that's a really common reaction to any kind of difficult news. Denial is a powerful thing. For sure. It makes you wonder, was this just a refusal to accept this truth about himself? Right, or was there something else going on there? Yeah. Was he afraid to even go there? Right, was it a fear of what that would mean yeah. if he were to really look at it? Exactly. And of course, this is all happening as we kind of trace the trajectory of his life. Yeah. We fast forward a few years, he finds himself in some legal trouble Yo. and is ultimately arrested and imprisoned in Israel for securities fraud. Wow. OK, so now we're getting into some serious stuff. Right. And it's here during his parole okay. that he's required to undergo another mental health evaluation. Interesting. And this time something shifts. OK. This time he accepts the NPD diagnosis. Wow. So he goes from complete denial to acceptance. And what's really fascinating is that he seems to find a sense of relief in finally understanding himself. That's really powerful, actually. His behaviors, the patterns that have been driving his actions. It's like a light bulb moment. It really is. You know, like all of a sudden all these pieces from his past start to make sense. Right. It's like that missing piece of the puzzle. Exactly. And this acceptance, this understanding of NPD, it doesn't just impact his personal life. It really becomes a defining force in his work. Yeah. You can see how someone who's gone through that experience would want to dedicate themselves to understanding it better. And he becomes a leading voice on narcissism. Wow. And he even suggests that many powerful figures in society might actually be narcissists. Okay, now that's an interesting thought. It really is. You start thinking about it. You know those really charismatic leaders, the ones who just draw people in? Yeah. Are those traits? Are they rooted in narcissism? Okay. 
It's a question worth asking. It is. And he really dives into all of this on his website. Oh, right. The one he runs. Yeah. Which becomes this platform where he's sharing his perspective on NPD. Okay. And he's introducing these new concepts. Like what? Well, he starts using this term narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply. Okay. And it really refers to this constant need for validation and attention. Oh, yeah. That often fuels this narcissistic behavior. We all know those people, right? Right. Always needing to be the center of attention. Exactly. Or they constantly steer the conversation back to themselves. Or they take credit for other people's work. Oh, yeah. All the time. It's like this endless need for validation. And it comes at the expense of real, genuine connection with other people. Exactly. And you know what else? He doesn't just stop there. What else? He takes it a step further, and he distinguishes between different types of narcissists. Whoa, okay, so there's more than one. Oh, yeah. He talks about cerebral narcissists versus somatic narcissists. Okay, so now you're just using big words. All right. <laughs> all right, I'll break it down for you. Please. So a cerebral narcissist, they're all about their intellect. They need to be seen as the smartest person in the room. Oh, so it's about intelligence. Yeah, they're constantly seeking validation for how smart they are. Right. Think of that professor who like belittle students for asking questions. Oh, yeah. Or that coworker who just dominates every meeting with their vast knowledge. Right. That's your cerebral narcissist. Okay, all right, I get it. And then you have your somatic narcissist. Oh, okay. They're all about their physical appearance. Oh, okay. They're obsessed with their body, their clothes, how attractive they are. All right, okay. They need those compliments. So like the friend who's always posting gym selfies? Exactly. Or the coworker who has to be the best dressed? Yes. Okay, got it. Two sides of the same coin in a way. So we've got Vaknin, this guy who went through this intense personal experience with NPD. Right. And then he turns that experience into this platform for helping people understand this really complex disorder. And he's introducing new ideas, yeah. new ways of thinking about it. And then just when you think you have Vaknin all figured out, yeah. we uncover this whole other layer to his story. What does it tell me more? It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. How the human mind can go from, you know, something so complex but still focused on the human experience to something completely different totally and in this case uh with Vakanin, it takes us to a totally different realm okay you know, i've been talking about psychology right narcissism right it's very human centric exactly term. yeah but then you look at his 1982 phd dissertation yeah and what is it about time asymmetry time asymmetry yeah i'm gonna need you to uh break that down break that down a little bit basically is this idea that time it's not symmetrical okay it doesn't flow the same in all directions right uh, it's kind of a mind-bending concept yeah. it comes from theoretical physics so we're talking about some pretty complex stuff here oh yeah Vagnin really dives deep into this stuff it really is remarkable the range i know that he has from you know the complexities of human behavior to the mysteries of the universe it's yeah. like he's got a foot in both worlds it does seem that way and he doesn't just keep it theoretical either yeah he actually explores these ideas through documentaries oh okay he appears in mania i psychopath and how narcissists took over the world wow those are some Pretty intense titles. Pretty intense titles. Right. So he's taking this very visual medium yeah. and making it accessible to a wider audience. He's like, he wants people to understand these things. Yeah. Engage with them. But there's one documentary in particular that really stands out. Which one? I, Psychopath. Okay. And it's in this film that Vaknin undergoes evaluation and he meets the criteria for psychopathy. Psychopathy. But not narcissism. Wait a minute. So the guy who was diagnosed with NPD right. writes extensively about NPD. Runs a website about yeah. NPD. Suddenly he's a psychopath. Right. Not a narcissist. It's a real head scratcher. It, does this mean his NPD diagnosis was wrong? Mm -hmm. Could it be that these disorders are more fluid than we think? More overlap, maybe? Is it possible that he was maybe misdiagnosed? Possibly. Or maybe this actually supports his whole thing about narcissists having these false selves. Right. That they're so good at hiding who they really are. That even trained professionals. Even the experts. You can't quite pin them down. Exactly. It really makes you question everything. It does. It really highlights how complex yeah. these disorders truly are. And how much we still don't know about them. And I think at the end of the day, it's a good reminder that we're talking about human beings, right. each with their own Unique story, experience. experiences, their own complexities. Right, and you can't just put them in a box. Oh, cool. You can't just slap a label on them. We're all more than just a diagnosis. Exactly. Yeah. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of Sam Vaknin, 
We are left with a lot to think about. Yar. This is a writer. Professor. A self-proclaimed narcissist. A man who delves into theoretical physics. And a documentary subject whose own evaluations seem to contradict. I know. His own self-proclaimed diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. But I think it's a good reminder that the human mind. Yeah. It's a strange and wonderful and often very confusing place. It really is. And as we always say. We're all on our own journey. We're all on our own journey. Trying to figure it all out. Trying to figure it all out. And I think this deep dive. Definitely gives us a lot to chew on. A lot to chew on. For sure. So until next time, we will leave you with this. Okay. How do you think Vaknin's personal experiences with NPD influenced his work? That's a good question. And his public persona. Yeah. Was he uniquely qualified to understand and explain this complex disorder? Because he had lived it. Because he had lived it. Or did his experiences color his views? Right. Did they cloud his judgment? It's a tough one. It is something to ponder. For sure. As you continue your own exploration. Of the human experience. The human experience.